Yesterday, a Canadian P-3 detected underwater noises in the search area. As a result, ROV operations were relocated in an attempt to explore the origin of the noises. Although the ROV searches have yielded negative results, they continue. Additionally, the data from the P-3 aircraft has been shared with our U.S. Navy experts for further analysis, which will be considered in future search plans. The surface search is now approximately two times the size of Connecticut, and the subsurface search is up to two and a half miles deep, exponentially expanding the size of the search area. When you're in the middle of a search and rescue case, you always have hope. That's, that's why we're doing what we do. Um, with respect to the noises specifically, we don't know what they are, uh, to be frank with you. Um, we, the, the P3 detected noises. That's why they're up there. That's why they're doing what they're doing. That's why they put sonar buoys in the water. Um, the good news is, what I can tell you is, we're searching in the area where the noises were detected, and we'll continue to do so. And we, we hope um, that when we're able to get additional ROVs, which will be there in the morning, the intent will be to continue to search um, in those areas where the noises were detected, and if they're continuing to be detected, and then put additional ROVs down in the last known position where the search was originally taking place. I hadn't heard 30-minute uh, uh, intervals. So here's what I can tell you. We, so I, I am not a trained ear for underwater aquatics. Um, that's why we have a team of experts that are analyzing that data. That data was sent immediately to, uh, to the Navy uh, last night and it was analyzed overnight, they're still looking at it, but I can tell you that it's, it's inconclusive. Um, but again, I think the important piece is we're searching in the area where the noises were detected. Several P3 flights are, have heard the noises um, as yesterday, and we put uh, assets there. Uh, we, we relocated assets immediately. Um, with respect to uh, food and water, it's my understanding there are some limited rations. I, I can't tell you exactly how much um, they have aboard, but they do have some limited rations aboard. The noises have been described as banging noises, uh, but again, they have to put the whole picture together in context and they have to eliminate uh, potential man-made sources other than the Titan. There are sounds uh, by biologics that sound man-made to the untrained ear, but I can assure you that the people listening uh, to these tapes uh, are trained. Uh, there are a lot of vessels in the area and they each make noise. The oxygen, that, that, that's just one piece of data, right? There, there are a lot of pieces of data that we need to consider. And, you know, we're continuously looking at that and we'll continuously, uh, you know, do that throughout the search. Um, but that's not the only thing that's important, right? And, and right now our efforts are, are solely for, focused on the search. Um, that certainly is a dialogue that's happening. Um, but uh, but we're focused on searching at this point. This is a, a recovery or a rescue? At this oh, this is a this is a search and rescue mission, 100. percent We are smack dab in the middle of search and rescue, and uh, and uh, we'll continue to put every available asset that we have in an effort to to find the Titan and the crew members. We're in this. We're right in the middle of search and rescue case. So I I don't. I don't want to get into a discussion about when that would end um, with respect to this case. What I will tell you, though, I'm happy to to explain to you kind of how that process were to work. Um, it, you know. The Coast Guard prosecutes search and rescue cases on a, on a daily basis, and sometimes we don't find what we're looking for. And you have to you have to carefully consider uh, all of the factors, and um, there are a lot of factors you consider. And then after you consider all of those factors, sometimes you're you're in a position where you have to make a tough decision. We're not there yet, um, but if we continue to search. Potentially, we could be at that point, but again, we're not there yet, and um, that's a discussion that we will have uh, with the family long before um, I'm going to discuss that here publicly. Uh, the ROVs that are diving today, um, well, what's the what's the depth on the three? Four thousand yeah, meters. Four thousand meters, um, and they some additional ROVs that'll be arriving tomorrow have uh, additional depth capability. Um, with respect to uh, an object, so. Yesterday, one of the aircraft uh, did see an object. I, I will tell you this. In search and rescue missions, when aircraft are flying continuously, there is stuff out in the ocean that is floating. Um, we went back. We looked at it. It, it, it wasn't. We, we didn't determine it to be debris. We don't think it's, it, it, it correlates with the case. And it is not uncommon at all during an active search to see things. And then we go and look at them.